Threats, Vulnerabilities, and Mitigations. These are the three main titles covered by the objectives of Domain 2 of the Computer Security Plus. Welcome to Cyber Culture Interface. Today we continue our review of the domains of Computer Security Plus certification exam. And like we said, Domain 2 is testing your knowledge of threats, vulnerabilities, and mitigations. And under these uh, topics or under these titles, uh, the topics that will be coming across include common threat actors and motivations, threat vectors and attack surfaces, types of vulnerabilities, mitigation techniques, and indicators of malicious activity. So you are going to be expected to have uh, is foundational knowledge of these topics under this uh, domain too. Now we look at the first one, common threat actors and motivations. Your knowledge of common threat actors and motivations should cover your understanding of what threat actors have. So here, you know, there are different types of threat actors. We have the nation state actors, the unskilled attackers, or usually sometimes called the script kiddies. Uh, we have the activists, we have the insider threat, we have organized crime, we have the shadow IT, and, and then the, the shadow IT is usually is described as um, you know, when in an organization you have people who are carrying out uh, unrecognized or unauthorized IT uh, activities. For example, a user in an organization might be setting up its own antivirus within the organization or using uh, some softwares or applications that are not given out by the IT support group. So that is meaning that you are shadowing the activities of the IT support. So that's referred to shadow IT. Sometimes it can be malicious. Uh, it can be carried out with malicious intent. So these are uh, this also falls under the threat actor. So these are examples of threat actors. Then these threat actors are you know they all have certain attributes. So they can be internal or external. So all these threat actors can be categorized or described as having. Uh, internal or external they can be based on resources and funding they can be described by their level of sophistication and their level and capability so uh, the attributes of these actors are defined by these three things there can be internal external their resources the kind of resources the way they are funded and they are, they are differentiated also by their level of sophistication and capability and then the motivations these threat actors have different motivations. So some are motivated by data exfiltration, uh, experiment. For example, the nation states uh, actors or activists. We can most of the time they are uh, they are they are backed by the, an idea or the intention to carry out an espionage activity. See, this is where you see two different countries, you know, attacking each other. Most of the time, they are trying to extract some secret or confidential information from each other. Then we have other motivations include things like service disruption like we have in denial of service. Some threat actors are just want to stop your service like an activist for instance might be uh, trying to prove a point or campaigning against an action and thereby shutting down or disrupting the services of a political organization or different organization that they're trying to uh, preach or campaign against. Then we have mot other motivations could be uh, the purpose of blackmail might be the intention to for financial gain, it might be for philosophical or political beliefs. So these are all different motivations or uh, these are different motivations behind each of these threat actors. Sometimes it can be an ethical too. For instance, when you have a penetration tester uh, that is being hired for to check the defense of an organization, the cybersecurity defense. So this can be ethical because such a Penetration tester will be licensed and will take the necessary authority. So these are different motivations. Another motivation could be for revenge. So these are all different motivations for threat actors. Some motivation could be to cause chaos or disruption in the case of maybe when war is going up or when um, two different uh, organizations who are rivals are attacking each other. You know, they may be in the intention may be to cause disruption in the services or cause chaos within the society. So these are all uh, motivations. Then we have uh, another knowledge or area that will be tested by domain two is the common threat vectors and attack surfaces. So when we are talking about threat vectors and attack surfaces, we are basically talking about how uh, 
these attacks are being launched. Threat vectors and attacks of these are the platforms or the means by which an hacker carries out this attack. So we have message-based uh, attack. We, you know, these are using make it, when an hacker is making use of email or maybe SMS or instant messaging. These are message-based uh, attacks of faces. Then we have the file-based. This is in a case of you know inserting a virus into a file. We have voice calls when we have uh, someone making use of voice messages or phone call to carry out social engineering attack. These are uh, a voice call can be used. It's an attack surface. Uh, a removable device also is an attack surface or a, threat, or a vector. This is a, which means that attacks or can be threats can be executed or carried out using removable devices like flash drives, CD ROMs, hard drives. They can be used to transmit. Uh, Threats too. Then we have vulnerable software. So when the software is vulnerable, when there are bugs in the software or there are reasons why the software will not work properly, so this uh, attack surfaces too. Then we in under vulnerable software we have the client based versus agents. Client based simply means that the software that is reside residing in your client, and sometimes some of this software do not need uh, a host. Or a client for them to operate. So we have client based and agent -led. Then unsupported systems and applications. Unsupported systems and applications too can be a threat, um, an attack surface, which means uh, attacks or threats can be, you know, can be shipped or carried out via systems that are not supported. This is simply talking about those kind of applications that the producers or the manufacturers are no longer willing to provide technical support. So such uh, systems, when they have uh, issues, they can be a very good way or uh, opportunity for hackers to get into your organization. Then we have unsecured networks. When we, uh, we have different type of unsecured network, wireless, can be wired, it can be a Bluetooth network. So uh, these are networks that are open. For instance, when you have a network that the SSID is publicly seen or maybe the key, the pass key is uh, is a default key or pass key is easier, easy to guess, you know, or when a Bluetooth is not properly secured, these are unsecured network and they can be attack surfaces uh, for an hacker to get into your system or your organization. Then we have open service ports. So when you set up your systems and uh, services that are not in use are left open, these are open service ports. They could be reason or they could be very good attack surfaces for an hacker to get into your system. Then we have default credentials. Some, uh, a lot of people, when they buy new systems or new devices, they just continue to use the credentials that the manufacturer as used and most of these credentials are available on the internet which hackers can easily take make use of and use to you know try and log into your system so default credentials are surfaces or vectors by which an hacker can carry out uh, an attack then we have the supply chain so in supply chain we have a uh, money service providers they are a source of uh, uh, attack they are an attack office they are a source they they are an opportunity for an hacker to come in through uh, money service providers, vendors. We have had in recent times when an attack are launched because, you know, um, some providers are not taking care of, you know, they are not properly uh, secured. Vendors too can be used to carry out an attack. Then we have suppliers, all these supply chain. In fact, the supply chain is simply talking about all the people involved in your chain of supply, in the, your uh, all the people that are involved in providing the resources you make use of in your organizations to, pro to to carry out your production or to produce or to render your service. So, the supply chains have a lot of people or have a lot of uh, vectors along the line, which include the suppliers, the vendors, all these people. Uh, can be a source of attack or can be a point at which an hacker can get into your organization. Then we have human vectors or social engineering. These are phishing, phishing, phishing is simply use of uh, a fake website or, you know, fake links that are generated that will lead you to a different site aside from the one you, you want to visit. The concept of phishing being done via SMS is called 
estimation. Then we have misinformation and disinformation. This is a very common uh, social engineering uh, way of accessing information by providing different information impersonation people pretending to be who they are not then we have business email compromise this is also common in recent times we've heard of um, hackers who compromise organizations emails and then they divert payment that is meant for services or payment meant for different purposes being redirected there's a common one that happened during the covid whereby uh, a popular hacker uh, by the name hush puppy was found that money that is meant for procuring covid vaccines were diverted into a different account because the business email of the organization that is supposed to make the payment was compromised and then the emails uh the wrong uh, payment information was placed inside the email so these are business email compromise then we have pretexting pretexting is simply when somebody is creating a message uh is creating a scenario that is wrong a scenario with the intention of the a, a scenario that is false with the intention of deceiving people to providing information so it's like uh it's like the word pretending but in time in this when you are pretending and you are carrying out via text message so pretexting is a form of pretending carried out via text message. So this is simply people pretending like a situation is happening whereby that situation is really not happening. Then we have watering hole. Watering hole is talking about uh, targeting a website that an organization visits people from a particular organization. A good example is Facebook. People, because a lot of people visit Facebook, make use of Facebook, then a lot of hackers also are on this Facebook trying to carry out social engineering attacks so this is watering hole. so facebook in this case could be like a watering hole where they know people go to to get information thereby they also go hackers also go to this uh facebook to carry out social engineering attacks so this is a watering hole then we have brand impersonation which means somebody impersonating a brand then we have typo squatting this means that people uh, inserting typo errors with the purpose of deceiving people for a, a good example is instead of uh having yahoo.com someone can have type yahoos and had an s behind the double hole so that would lead to a different uh website 